a beautiful day to beat the sun up. Rise and grind and greet your day. Put something new in that coffee cup. Live your life the 6S way. Stay safe, stay sane, stay sexy. Try that new morning routine. And follow your curiosity with RK. It is too early for that note. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. How are y'all doing? Yeah, what's up, everyone? How you doing today? How you doing? It's a beautiful-ish Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's 63 degrees here. That's wonderful. I guess it is a beautiful Wednesday. We're going to have a new... What? I was saying, we're going to get the tropical storm Nicholas right now. Oh, no, you just had a storm. Oh, no, I... Tropical storms are fine. It's, it's as long as it doesn't take out the power of the mine. It's just oh, um, I, I'm going to use that as my excuse for why I don't have my Lulu row on because the streets are flooded. Okay. Okay. My, my, my tent. I my think your actual excuse is that you don't want to wear it, or maybe it doesn't look good on you. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely don't like. It's still at my. Uh, it's still at my house. Oh, and so you? Oh, you just haven't been able to get to it. Okay. I had my tent to bring it in. Um, okay. so it's, it's in his place right now. Um, so it's safe and it's sane and it's sexy, but it's just not on me. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. You guys, we're going to have Roberta on in a little bit. I have sent her the link and I'm just checking to make sure everything's good. But just so you guys know, today we are going to be interviewing Roberta who was in the Lula Rich documentary um once she's available i sent her the link last night so i uh, i know sometimes she has a little trouble getting on stream so i'm hoping that everything goes okay with that but in the meantime i have a new lularoe outfit on today that amanda sent uh this one is some kind of dress um i think this looks like kind of exactly what you'd expect from lularoe it's, um, I want to say ugly. <laughs> I can't tell if it's ugly. So what's weird is that yesterday's shirt that I was wearing was an extra small and it was very large on me. And this is an extra large and it's closer to fitting, which is, again, their size is so inconsistent. It doesn't mean anything. I'm thinking I, I should try tying one of those knots in it just so that I look like what people expect so we looked at a few of the knots yesterday you know maybe i should try one of those um flowery knot tutorials or something um how do people do those knots do they just like gather fabric and and tie it in there i don't know taking notes Taking notes. All right, I'm going to see if I can say hello to everyone in the chat, and I'm going to see if I can find the tutorial to do the flower knot. The flower knot? Is it pretty? I mean, it's it's all right. It's all right? It's all right, it's yeah. All right. It's, not, it's not too flowery? Eh. I don't know if I have enough excess fabric to do this knot. There's a lot. It looks like a lot of fabric. Well, we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. Hopefully I don't show everyone my butt. It's a good goal not. It's a, it's a good goal to have. Yeah. Good morning, Monique. Glad to see you here. Good morning, Paige. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Cher. Good morning to Crow Loves Core. Good morning to Molly. Um, Monique lost power in the tropical storm yesterday. I'm really glad you got it back. That's always so frustrating to have no power. Yeah, it's not fun. Good morning, Katie. Um, good morning, Sarah. We got a lot of people here. I'm um, say hello to everybody. Thanks, you guys, for all being here this morning. Good morning, Liv. Good morning, Shelby. Good morning, Gail. Um, let's see. Meerkat World loves Roberta's podcast. Uh, I'm make sure Roberta's okay to come. I'll, I'll tell her you said that when she. Oh. She's getting everything. I just heard back from her. She's getting everything set up. So she should be on in a couple of minutes. Uh, and then we can tell her how much you love her podcast. Katie says, I need to finish the stream starting soon song. 
it just recorded. I need to finish. Yes, yes, y'all. So as you know, we have that new little stream starting soon animation that comes up and it has some flute sounds in it. And then we're like, everyone's kind of like, what if we got Katie to play the flute for that instead? So now we're going to have Katie's original flute music, which will be way more fun than the YouTube stock music. But the YouTube stock music is a fun thing to write about. Is it a fun thing to write about? Yeah, first Lindsay hit, uh, records her video. Then she, <laughs> the the then she exports the video. And then she looks for <laughs> royalty free stuff. Speaking of our book, Cancel Sean Boston, y'all. Sean Boston next? the Puppet is coming out amazing. Yes, so. he is. All of anyone games. who's new this week brief context we wrote a book together called cancel sean boston it's a novel it came out last month it's available it's on cool. amazon and i think it's pretty funny and we decided that when we're in new orleans we're going to do tommy was so weak and so to do tommy was so weak we have to make a shitty movie about uh, so, so we're going to make a adaptation of cancel sean boston the book into a movie and we decided sean needs to be played by a puppet so we've got Paige the puppet building sean the puppet he's coming out great so everyone should check out Paige the puppet's channel because she's been live streaming building sean boston the puppet and he's looking pretty good yeah and she posts regular updates on her instagram too which is also Paige the puppet yeah it's pretty awesome it's not bad it's a it's a it's a pretty solid looking fucker i mean he's tall he's got some solid gains going on he he's got him. big gains dude this puppet is like ripped as hell like yeah. i want this puppet's body yeah, we 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 act we 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 fucked around and got a hot puppet. We did. I kind of love that. I love that for us. I'm yeah. very excited um, that. Uh, yeah, Paige. I don't know. Maybe you want to send the puppet to New Orleans, in, or I don't know. Or maybe I'm trying to figure out where Paige should send the puppet when she's done. Send it to you. Well, she can send it to me, but then I'll I'll bring it to New Orleans. Well, I have a carry-on bag now, so I can bring the puppet. I'll bring the puppet with me on the plane and make it talk. Well, I mean, she can send it to me. It's no big deal. I, I do. I just know that your address is changing and stuff. So. Well, I mean, my, my address isn't changing anymore. I send everything to my house. It's just... Oh, okay. All right, Paige, you can send the puppet to either one of us. I'm not there permanently until the 27th of this month oh my god 12 days i have to pack you gotta pack you got you're moving <laughs> in 12 days <laughs> what the fuck that and then the to... 27th of next month i'll be in new orleans with you with our puppet making a movie dude that's pretty cool that's pretty cool i'm excited <laughs> that, that, that's pretty wild i'm very excited after all these years we're finally gonna meet i know i know uh, it's gonna be weird. What if it ruins our friendship? What if, well, like, what if the fact know? that you have legs is like I just can't get over it? I'll yeah, be what like, if we're meant to be friends on a screen? I don't think that's true. I don't know. I've never you like uh like Jeannie says. I've never you'll never have a friend like me. And I'll never have a friend like you, dude. Are we like Rick and Jeannie? Oh no, I was saying Jeannie like Aladdin. Oh, I thought you meant Jeannie like from our book who only knows Rick virtually. Yeah, that too. Yeah, like you were making a perfect comparison um, that had like a double meaning and it just like accidentally fell into a perfect pun. Dude, we entendre the fuck out of the show. Oh, we do. I love that for us. I love it for us. Good morning, uh, Elsie. Can I, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong. Is it Ariane D. De La... I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your last name. But good morning and I'm glad you're able to make it today. Liz loves getting here in time for the theme song. Dude, I love the theme song. Shout out to Gail for writing us an amazing theme song. Shout out to Gail for me. I met Gail in person this past weekend. It was wonderful. I was at the Chicago Printers Row Lit Fest with my table signing books. And Gail rolled up and we took some selfies. And it was great. And it was great. Uh, good morning to Kat Benson. Glad to see you. Uh, I think we'll probably have Kat on the show tomorrow and she can show off her vegetable pattern leggings. Good morning, Jennifer. Let's see. Oh, okay. You like the colors? I like the colors. I like the colors of this shirt. I think the bright colors are fun. I don't like the pattern. I don't like the pattern, the way that they're laid out. And I just don't like the shape of the outfit at all. Like, I think that's just the problem with how the dress is shaped. Yeah, you, you're you more of a uh, Teddy Fresh girl. Oh, 100%. 100%. Which is, I mean, that's also 
bright colors and obnoxious patterns, which is why yeah. I didn't what yeah, blocks. That's that's blocking. But that's blocks. Yeah, that's yeah. different. <laughs> I like different obnoxious colors. Yeah, you, I, I I like I like blocks. You no, know, I I, li I like I like Lego clothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. My mom is here. Good morning to my mom. Yeah. You guys, I got my mom to watch Lula Rich last night. And you she was texting. What? Have you watched? Did you watch it with her? Is that your third time? No, I watched it twice. I didn't watch it last night. My mom watched it without me. Um, but she was texting me throughout it, being like, Oh my god, this company is is so horrible. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Oh my god, they're so bad. It was great to get those texts. You, you uh, definitely like getting texts of like you, you like live tweeting, you like live texting, you like live voice memoing. You just like live. You don't like dead. I like yeah, yeah. I like I like things live instead of dead. Yeah. Speaking of which, I mean tonight, if you wanna if you wanna work out and watch Star Trek, hit me up. Oh, I'm always down. Yeah. Um. It's been a, it's been like a couple weeks now since I or, has it been a couple weeks or just one week since I've seen? Last episode I saw is still the Edo episode where Picard thought it was a great idea to send Wesley down to Orgy Planet. Oh, God, that one. This planet where everyone has sex all the time? I'm going to send the kid. Ugh. Picard would not be a very good dad. And he knows that, too. And I like that he admits that outright. He's like, yeah, I don't want to have kids because I'd be a shit dad. You go, Glenn Picard, Coco. Yeah. Good morning, Spinster Punk. Good morning, Anyways. Um, Every time I see her name, I love it. It's just such a good name. Anyways. Apparently, I look like an 80s disco ball. Okay. Gail says, a 70s stained glass lamp. Oh, Liz. No, I didn't walk Chewy. I should have walked Chewy in my outfit. I didn't. I was a weenie, and I went and put on some shorts and a tank top to walk Chewy. You and then I, yesterday was my day off, so I came back inside and then took all my clothes off and fell asleep. So I didn't wear clothes most of the day. I just took naps. You should have wore a sign when you took a pro walk wearing the Lulu Row stuff from Accepted. Ask me about my wiener. <laughs> well, don't like sometimes MLMs, they'll wear the stuff that says like, ask me about my business and things like that. Well, yeah, they um, are the advertisement. That's why they want them to uh, to purchase such expensive uh, attire. It's kind of funny how they, they want them to like buy really expensive attire. Um, and wear it around to, to show how much money they're making from Lulu Row. They don't necessarily want them to wear Lulu Row. Exactly. Well, Lulu. except like, remember in the documentary they were talking about how that one that one woman was mentioning that their first day of work she showed up wearing Chanel and DN was like, that's not Lulu Row. And she was oh. like, Yeah, it's Chanel. And she was like, You can't wear that, you have to wear Lulu Row. You <laughs> and she made her change out of like her Chanel outfit <laughs> into Lulu Row leggings. <laughs> and she was like, Oh, okay. Um, I just, never mind. I'll tell you. I have a story for after the stream. What's up, Rebecca? Glad to see you. Kimberly says the dress is flattering to my figure. Really? I'm not. I'm not getting that. I'm glad you think that. Thank you. Let's 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 look at this again. This dress is um tick curtains, dude. This yeah, dress it, makes me look like it's flattering. I don't know about that. It's yeah, flattering. it makes me look like you're one giant boob. <laughs> okay yeah i guess depending who you are that could be flattering that, which is everyone's favorite part of the body so you're so gonna... it's like if i just all of me is boobs which is already <laughs> how it kind of is look a solid 62 no no a solid 69 percent of you right now is boob yeah as nitty dragon says what kind of extra large is this right okay what kind of extra large is this because yesterday the shirt i was wearing was an extra small and it's bigger than this and this is an extra large. I mean, I'm not like a super small person. I'm about five six. I'd say I'm a medium sized woman. I often buy clothes that are a size medium. You're uh, we talked about this yesterday. It depends on what day of the week it is. That's how big you are. That's true. As we mentioned, I'm fat on Tuesdays, but today's Wednesday, so you wear pink. I, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Maybe I need to tie a, a, like we were saying, I should tie a knot in this one. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I like it when you go elevator music. 
Yeah, I gotta, I can't just have any amount of silence in my life ever, so sometimes I give myself elevator music. So when you're just, like, walking chewy, if you don't have headphones on, do you just, like, play musicals in your head? Oh, I just, like, I just, like, especially if I'm walking in with Tyler and we don't have any topics, I'll just be like, boop a doop bop 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 I'll just start singing random <laughs> stuff, yeah, on the walk. I dig it. Yeah, that seems like something you would do. I like silence. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, I didn't always, but I feel like most kids don't. I, I lately have been actively seeking it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A uh, Allie says right here, I can wear anywhere between a medium and a two X and Lularoe, and I'm normally a size fourteen. Yeah, the sizes are so inconsistent. I also don't know what size I am. Even just in regular women's clothes, they're also inconsistent. I'm. I'm anywhere from a six to a ten, depending on the brand and what article of clothing it is and all kinds of other things and what day of the week it is. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, clothing in general is inconsistent. This just isn't just a uh, LuLaRoe problem. Um, you gotta only have elastic, then everything fits you. Let's see. I remember the first time I got a pair of like stretchy jeans in my life, my mind was just blown because I didn't realize jeans could be that comfortable. Dude, I love stretchy jeans. I fucking love stretchy jeans. My Remember, favorite. like in the '90s when they didn't have stretchy jeans, when jeans were like hard material. I hated wearing jeans until. Why? Well, I, like... I have a pair of those too. I have two pairs of jeans, and they're pretty much my go-to's for everything. And if it's a formal attire, I usually try and sneak my black jeans on. Yeah, Tyler wore dark jeans to our wedding. I mean, that just looks good. It looks I, good. Well, our wedding was not super formal, so it was fine. We were like business casual wedding. I don't know. What, jeans just make people look good, dude. Je Do you, jeans look good. Jeans look jeans good. Look. As, um, where was it? I don't know. I, I definitely have to get a suit. Like, I'm long overdue for having a suit, so... I just... think I need to get a new suit as well at some point. I Because I've worn... Um, I used to have a lot of suits, but I used to be very skinny. So I don't fit in any of the suits anymore. But I think after I get my breast reduction, then I'll go search for, like... I'll go shopping for a really nice suit. Andrew spree? You're just going to get a bunch of Andrew clothes? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I'm going to go shopping on, like, all the butch lesbian websites and stuff. Or maybe I'll go to, like, a... Uh, uh, like Are a, Andrew uh, Hose like a thing? Like, is that a community? Is what a community? Andrew Hose? I don't think so. Not that I know of. If it rhymes, it has to exist. Oh, right? well, okay. Well, maybe we can start it. Oh, yes. Okay. Holly says, Wild, Wild Fang is one of my favorite brands, but I don't own anything from them because they, they I don't think my boobs are going to fit in any of their clothes. However, after I get my surgery, I'm going to go crazy on the Wild Fang website because, dude, some of their suit jackets. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, y'all, you know, with that, we've got our guest here, Roberta. Welcome, everyone, to Roberta, star uh, of the Lula Rich documentary, our, our new our new movie star, with her sparkly nails, looking glamorous. I love it. Hi. It's so early in the morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on our show. I know it's early, but I'm so glad you were able to make it. Yay. Hi, I'm here. If it takes me like three or four minutes, that's why. Because it's um, 622. <laughs> God damn. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And I'm so yeah. glad because this week we've been um, talking all about LuLaRoe. We've been studying this stupid ass company. Uh, we watched a documentary together. I watched it a second time because I'm going to make a review video of it. Our friend Amanda sent us a box full of uh, her old LuLaRoe clothes that she had back in the day. And so I've been wearing a different item every day. Um, the sizing is incredibly inconsistent is what we found. Sometimes the extra small is too big and the extra large is too small. And it's just like, how the fuck do you know what size to wear? Um, Savvy, in, in the words of Mark, I think you're the problem. That's yeah, right. You're definitely the problem. The documentary would say your clothes are a problem. You're maybe you're the problem. Like everything he's you're too big and small at the same time, Savvy. Yeah, sorry. That's the problem. how dare you? How dare you? Your leggings are stale. I think you're stale. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
dude, Marcus, he's just a walking meme, but like not in a cute way. I'm just looking for the one comment. We had a couple people before you showed up who were like singing your praises, and I just wanted to like help wake you up with praise, but I can't. Yay! Right now. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people are Hi, talking everyone. about how much they love your podcast. Yay! Um, That's why I'm wanna... so tired. I stayed up so late last night finishing Lachey's episode because I was so busy yesterday. Oh, you're having Lachey on the podcast? <laughs> she was on. I recorded um, the episode came up last night I, I think i finished it at like 1:40. oh hell yeah i have to listen <laughs> to that here's some praise guys can you quickly just praise roberta for us because i can't find your old praise comments so everyone just send all everyone of them. talk about all the things you love about roberta they're not color street i swear no i love those so much where did you get those these are just like glue on nails like i don't yeah. have time to go to the salon um even though i work in one because we don't do that kind of nails in our salon i just don't have time so um after covid hit i just was like you know what i'm just gonna buy the press on kind and that's what they are and, and it's really fun and they pop off and i just you know i keep yeah. glue on hand i have a little glue right here I'm just i love press on nails i put them <laughs> on for videos sometimes and then i take them off as soon as i'm done filming the video because i am not able to move throughout my life with them yeah it's just it's just easier I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's just easier. <laughs> I don't like to change them. I don't know if these ones I think are like Ardell. Oh, they're right here. They were these Ardell Nail Addict Premium. Ooh, I love those. <laughs> um, anytime I'm out and I see nails, we always grab like a couple boxes. My daughter's obsessed with them too. And we just have a fun time. And I mean, find the joy in the little things. So press on yeah, those absolutely. Are, are the thing right now. <laughs> So you have a podcast that a bunch of people here love and that you were up late working on last night. Do you want to tell everyone about your podcast real quick and we can all know where to check it out? Yeah. So I started my podcast um, earlier this year in February after being like, after talking about it for three years, like I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Um, I used to do interviews and defective. The very first person I ever did an interview with was Sam. Um, <laughs> and so Sam and I did an interview and then I did one with Courtney and then I did one with Daryl, but there was technical difficulties. So it was really much, pretty much just Daryl going live and like me feeding him questions via instant message. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like as good as the other ones, but it was still, you know, it was an interview. And so those are the first ones that I ever did. Um, and for years and years and years, everybody was like, you should start a podcast. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. And then I was a guest on yeah. so many podcasts. Um, and I started guest hosting on a different podcast and I found out that I absolutely loved it. And um, in February, I've just bit the bullet and I just did it. So it's called Life After MLM, like you can see. And um, it's not professional. I literally record in my bedroom right here. I am not Jane Marie. If you are expecting Jane Marie, you will be sorely disappointed. <laughs> um, I... Uh, you know, it's just me and it's just a message I thought that needed to get out there. And I am not a professional editor or interviewer or recorder of any kind. Um, but I love, I love doing this and I love talking to the survivors of MLM. Um, and it's really fun. And I think the thing that I've learned the most about this podcast is like, it really is just all the same. Like I hear these stories from these people and they say, this is what happened to me. And, you know, this is why I was vulnerable and this is what happened. And this is, you go down the same path and really the only thing that's changes are the business names and like the people's names and like just some identifying characteristics for the most part, it's the same exact story over and over again. Um, and I think it's really fun and, you know, I have ADHD, so sometimes I'm a little all over the place, but that's, that's okay too. <laughs> Much love to the neurodivergent community. Yes. That goes, I didn't even understand why people were complaining because you sound totally normal to me. <laughs> Y'all check it out. Episode seven. I was a guest oh, on yes, the podcast. On the show. This was six months ago now, but I was a guest on the podcast in episode seven to talk about, I had just read the book and done a review on the book Ponzi nomics. So we were talking about kind of the, the book and all of that before, yeah. before she later uh, interviewed Robert Fitzpatrick who wrote yeah. the book and is yeah. the coolest. We love him. Yeah. And everyone on the show again. I, I, I hope we can get Robert Fitzpatrick on this show sometime. Oh, you can. He wakes up early. He's in North Carolina, so he won't even be a problem. Okay. Okay. I'll tell him about it. I, I got to talk to him again. I, I called him the other 
I called him just straight out of the blue the other night because I wanted to ask him. Um, I had emailed him and I was like, hey, when when the show comes out, will you be on the podcast again? He's like, yeah, that sounds good. And then um, it's just been so crazy that almost email doesn't work for me anymore because it's so fast paced. So I've been on the phone a lot more the last few days than I ever have. And I just called Robert and I was like, maybe he'll answer. And he answered. He's like, Roberta, how are you? Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. I have never <laughs> talked to Robert before. I don't think he knows me because I, I did message him once on Twitter and I, and then he just sent me like a, like a link. And that's, and that's our only conversation we've ever had. So I, I don't know if he, I, I, I'm torn between, does he not like me or does he just not use Twitter very much? That's what I'm not sure about. I don't sure think about. he uses Twitter very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Savvy I don't think did he have uses a nice, Twitter very much. Savvy did have, I was going to say, Savvy did have a nice one word conversation with Gary Vee though. So you've spoken to him more than Robert. Oh, I have spoken to Gary Vee on Twitter. Yes, I have. That was fun. Gary Vee DM'd me and said he'd come on our show for 15 minutes. And then we tried to set up a time and then he never <laughs> came on the show. And that he ghosted me, but he still follows me on Twitter, which is more than I can say for Grant Cardone, who blocked me. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, Roberta, as far yes. as this ongoing fight right now, one of the things I see with the Lularo specifically, I mean, with, with MLM specifically, is you obviously get a lot more headway when you're taking down and when you're going after an individual company instead of the entire MLM structure as a whole. Is that the best strategy moving forward for, for creators in anti-MLM communities to hone in on, on one company or should it continue being on just the structure as a whole? Because sometimes I get the vibe that it's more like the end of the second Batman movie where the Joker's hanging upside down and it's just Deanne saying, I feel like we're meant to do this for a long time. <laughs> well, that's that was like in the documentary, right? There was that woman who was still a LuLaRoe rep at the end of the documentary who was like, well, we didn't do, we haven't done anything that every other MLM hasn't done. So if you're going to investigate us, you might as well investigate all of them. And I was like, I no, I feel I was like, like that needs to uh -huh. go on one of those like self-owned Twitter profiles where I was like, yes, that's what we've been saying. Please investigate them all. But she was acting as if it was like, well, clearly you wouldn't investigate all of them. I'm like, no, that's what we're actually asking for. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I I still go after it as a whole because it is a whole. And I think sometimes when we we focus too much on one company, then it gives the Huns the excuse to say, well, see, that's one of the bad ones that they talk about. Like, that's a bad one and we're a good one. Um, and so I always just, I go after the, the whole system and not just the individual companies. But I think sometimes the way that you get people to look at the bigger picture is by pointing at the smaller picture. So sometimes like you know, boo, like people are like, what? They're drinking oh, God, and it makes people like want to look into it more. And then they look into it more and they're like, this is one big massive scam. Oh, my dog just came in. <laughs> one big massive scam. <laughs> and uh, I lost my train of thought because he just opened the door. <laughs> He wants some dirt. Like, Are you talking about my favorite dirt? He's like, Mom, where's the dirt? I want to. I want to eat the dirt. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so going after the individual companies themselves sort of po like puts a little bit of, uh, pressure, I want to mm -hmm. say, and you can actually use like specific examples. And I think when you do that, like every so often, um, it shows similarities and people go, wait a second, that's a lot like Mary Kay. And that's what I've been, I'm getting a lot of messages from people who were like, I, I watched the documentary and this, this could have been X, Y, Z. I said, I know yeah, <laughs> they're all the same. Um, and I think that's a really cool thing is that people are connecting to the story and they're going like, Oh, they're all, all MLMs are the same. Like, this is just like my time in so-and-so or yeah. you know what I mean? And I think like having those little bit of similarities is where we're going to really get um, people to, to make that, that connection and make that change and say, Hey, maybe it isn't just this company. Maybe it is all of them. Yeah. So would you say with this, the top priority is on actually going after and taking down the companies or just educating as wide of an audience as possible to make sure they never join in the first place. 
Yeah, I think the best way is to educate. I mean, they're really, it's, they're so protected. They're so protected in so many ways and there's so many loopholes and there's so many people fighting to protect them and not us that it really, it just seems like a very silly thing to go after these companies in that way. I mean, even us trying to go after LuLaRoe, like we didn't get a ton of a ton of uh, movement until we started thinking about other avenues to get them, right? Like there was like sales tax issue. We tried to go after them for sales tax. We tried to go after them for piercing the corporate veil. We tried to go after them for being a pyramid scheme. We, you know, said, hey, everybody report to your, your AG. Washington was the only one that either got enough reports or listened. But for the most part, it's like you have to be working toward the end of the whole industry as a whole. And the only way that that happens is by education because they're so protected. And so it's like we could sit and 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 just go for hours and hours and hours and fight and try to find all these little loopholes. And this is why and the IRS would be interested in this and the SEC would be interested in that. And really, at the end of the day, that's the only way that these MLMs actually do end up going down. I think Herbalife was like the SEC because of like money and issues. And well, it was a publicly traded company too. Right, but it's like it, they didn't go after it because of the MLM. They went after it because of a secondary thing because the MLM aspect was like so protected. And so I've asked Robert and he says too, he says the best way is public education because if you educate the public, they won't join them anymore. Yeah. Which brings us back to why the whole like grand scheme of this is an yes. MLM structure is so important. Yeah, yeah. Well, because that's the yeah. thing too is MLMs, the whole point of them is that they only survive if you have tons of people that keep recruiting more people. So the more people you educate about not joining them, yeah, like taking no vote on tax. Yeah, the more people you educate on not joining an MLM in the first place, the companies are going to eventually go out of business because the whole reason they survive is that they keep recruiting more people. So... Yeah. Um, and I know person... doing education has been very valuable. Just like I know that I have a fairly small channel and I get messages from people saying your videos helped me know what to be aware of and not to join this kind of company and things like that. So I even imagine like all, all together, we've got to be making some kind of impact. Yeah, absolutely. We totally are. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, there yeah, a few people have some questions for you. Yeah, so let's, let's pop those up. Yeah. So Kitty asks two questions. Why do you think people continue to stay even with investigations and people sharing their negative experiences? And do you think Deanne and Mark had good intentions at some point when the business was growing? I, um, like <laughs> I was like, let me pull those questions up so I can keep here, paying I'll, attention I'll, here. <laughs> I can highlight it again. Um, why do I think that, why do you think two people continue, think that people continue to stay even when about to pay? Um, because it's a cult. And because they're brainwashed and because even when I was in LuLaRoe, anything that I was like, I heard, and they're like, that's a lie. Like, well, there's, there's like a, a YouTube video. That's a bitter hater. Like that's not worth your time. That's not worth your energy. If you're going to dedicate your time to like investigating and watching all this hate, then you're not going to be working your business and then you're going to fail. And then it's, it's a toxic positivity. Don't take in any negative and so, opinions, yeah, all that. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's like, they give you this like chain of horrible things that will happen to you if you do this one little thing. And I remember even being in LuLaRoe was the same for me. Don't look at that stuff. Don't do that. That Those investigations are lies. I'm still seeing the comments. People are, are commenting and saying, these are just bad stories from 2015 to 2019. It's different now. And it's not different. I mean, they've changed things, but that's because there was a lawsuit against them. They had yeah. to legally, you know? So I think most people stay um, because they're brainwashed, unfortunately. And, and they, they think like they us. think that the business is good. They don't realize that it's the business model. And even when people leave some MLMs to join other MLMs, they, they still, they don't realize that it's the business model. And they just think, oh, well, I just couldn't sell vitamins, but I could definitely sell leggings. And the, the follow-up question is, do you think Deanne and Mark had good intentions at some point when the business was growing? I don't think so. I mean, I think they probably thought they did. Um, but everything that I've seen, and there's so much that's not in the documentary. So everything that I've seen feels like to me, um, either I'm crazy or <laughs> it's a, it was always a very calculated scam from the very beginning. 
Yeah, yeah that's, there was a that's point just how it beginning. feels like to me. Like when they were talking, this is when I was live tweeting it. This was something that resonated with people when it was at the beginning of the documentary, like the first episode. And they were talking about how they first started the company. And, you know, Deanne was talking about how she made the skirts and stuff. And I was like, she could have just opened this as a store. Like if it was taking off that well, like why didn't she just open it as a store? Why take on this model that's so predatory? Well, it's like, well, because she obviously she could make more money that way. And but I'm like, it, you could have had a successful business just running this as a store because people yeah. like your clothes. Why not do that? You know, but even her origin story in the documentary is a lie. Oh, like, it's a lie. a lie. Yeah. It's what not did she true. lie about? <laughs> really um, Please tell me that. It's, true. <laughs> it's sort of true. OK, what was that? I'm sorry. I was asking, was her maiden name at least startup? Because that's the yeah. greatest. Name. OK, good. Yes. OK, do you, you know where I can find the book that her mom wrote about how to be a submissive the woman? The power of femininity. Yeah, how to manipulate men with your with your body or whatever that book. I think originally the only way you could get that was by like ordering it and like mailing them like money in an envelope and hoping that they mailed it back. Okay, um, because I'm looking no for it. Get a copy of it somewhere. You can't. It's not available on Amazon. It's like it's nowhere. I can't find it anywhere to buy. I'm like maybe it's at a used bookstore somewhere, but like Probably. I have no idea where. You might be able to find it in a used bookstore, like for a lot of money on eBay, because everyone's gonna watch this movie and go, "Oh my god, I have that book." <laughs> they're gonna sell and they're them gonna all on eBay. Yeah, you know what? People might be trying to list it on eBay now that if they've watched it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe I'll try to find it because I want to review it on my channel so bad, but I'm like, I, I need to have it. Yeah, Deanne's origin story um, is not true. She, yeah, Nitty Dragon's right. So Deanne um, started this company. I want to call, I think it was called like Fitted Maxi Skirts or something. It was like this just maxi skirt business. And it was her and her sister, her twin sister, Diane. Deanne, Deanne and Diane. Diane. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it was her twin sister, Diane, and they started this fitted maxi skirt business and they were, you know, sewing in their living room on the dining room table with, they were enlisting the help of all the other sisters. I think she's one of 11 or something. There was a lot of sisters and they were all filming it or filming it. They were all sewing on the dining room table in the beginning. Um, when it started getting popular, she basically dumped her sister and added Mark into the bit and they started LuLaRoe. So this whole maxi skirt business was originally sort of the brainchild of Deanne and her sister and Deanne cut her out. Um, I think there's still some animosity over that whole situation, but what happened ended up happening was Diane started her own MLM. Um, and that MLM was called honey and lace. And then honey and lace had some issues with some legal stuff. Um, and it became Piffany. And then there was more legal stuff with LuLaRoe because there was a bridge contract and there's a bunch of people that had left LuLaRoe to go to Piffany. And there was this whole like, you're poaching people lawsuit um, that was settled, I think, at the beginning of this of, of 2020, sometime in the beginning of 2020, a bunch of LuLaRoe consultants who had gone over to Piffany had to resign as a result of this lawsuit. Um, and Diane is no longer involved. Uh, she was only involved in Honey and Lace, sold to this guy. There was all that issue with the bridges. <laughs> it's so much drama. And then Honey or Epiphany no longer exists, and it's now called Savvy. <laughs> it's now called Savvy? Yeah. I wish Savvy were here to hear that. Yeah. Um, as far as – they're Mormon, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it really feels like – I mean, just based on – so I had a brief intro to MLMs when I saw Betting on Zero a long time ago. Then I just – like didn't care about it because I was just I, I wasn't in that world whatsoever it, it's not like anyone ever slid into my DM saying that they had a great opportunity for me um so I didn't hear about them again until I became friends with Savvy um and now there's just a, what one of the consistent patterns I'm seeing is such a massive overlap between MLMs and the Mormon community like mostly if you're a woman yeah. in the community you're in the Mormon church your only opportunity for business is to either be scammed or get there is to either scam or be scammed yeah it's sad it's so sad it's so sad and it's also what you're saying right now with uh, Mark and Deanne's or yeah Deanne not Diane yeah. <laughs> specifically is as far as what kind of people they are you just take a look at their friends one cut their sister out of the company from the get-go and then Mark cut his best friend and supplier uh, out of, what, what exactly was the 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 Lulu Row in my dire or lost? What was that? Uh, so it's still ongoing. Okay. Um, it's a total shit show nightmare. It's amazing. It actually 
it actually came out um, as I was wrapping the Vice documentary. We were actually with the film crew and I, I turned my my phone back on and Becca from the documentary had texted me. She was like, are you still with Vice? <laughs> Look what just happened. And it was the My Dyer lawsuit. And so we got all that information to Vice. Um, that was in 2018. So it's been a while since that started. Um, but essentially what happened was LuLaRoe stopped paying them. They had... I, I mean, it makes no sense to me because I was like, how do you get to the point where you owe people millions and millions of dollars and you're continuing to to make them inventory? But apparently they had like this really good deal and that's just sort of how it was. And it had been that way the whole time. And so when it happened again, it wasn't a red flag because that had been the way that it had been happening with like them fronting the goods and then LuLaRoe like paying it back and like always being in a deficit. You know, LuLaRoe likes to say they're a debt-free company and I don't think they ever have been. Um <laughs> I think Mark's had liens on all of his properties since before LuLaRoe even started. Just nightmare. Just nightmare people. He definitely seems Just like he went to Trump University. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the My Dyer lawsuit was like, I think it started off as 33 million. I don't know what it's up to now, but basically like LuLaRoe stopped paying. They stopped paying My Dyer. And um, it's really funny because nothing in LuLaRoe is ever LuLaRoe's fault. And if any, if LuLaRoe is ever pointing fingers at somebody, you can always dig and find the truth. And, you know, they, uh, they said the reason they stopped paying, <laughs> I've actually found these text messages yesterday and I put them on Twitter, but I used to have a source in China who um, had an inside scoop of what was happening in the manufacturing process in China. So I reached out to this guy back in like, it was like 2018, I think. And I would ask him, hey, you're the person, someone told me to message you, you know what's going on. I, I posted all the actual pertinent information on Twitter. There's a big ch chat thread between this man and I. Um, but essentially, like the market in China was being flooded and there was so much Lularo everywhere. But over here, there was like a, like a scarcity, like there's not enough. So I'm thinking, why is there not enough over here? But this dude in China is telling me there's way too much over here, it's flooding our market. So I started investigating and it seemed as if what was happening was the manufacturer, like the manufacturers had made the clothes. They've been like, okay, my dyer, here it is. Pay us so that we can give you the clothes. And my dyer's like, not a problem. LuLaRoe, we need the money. And LuLaRoe's like, um, we don't have it. Never mind, cancel the order. And so they're like, never mind, cancel the order. And then China's like, okay. And, and then they're like, LuLaRoe told you to burn this. And Edward, <laughs> you know, it's like these people are like, not not gonna happen like just burn the clothes that we're not gonna pay for so i asked my source and he says why why would i burn the clothes you wouldn't pay for like why would i listen to you you don't you don't pay me why would i listen to you? i'm not gonna burn no, those clothes I owe you anything. You owe yeah, me. You like, owe me so he's like so what happens is that stuff gets sold by the pound in china on the market like we gave you the opportunity to buy it you don't want to buy it someone else will buy it. Like it's fast fashion. They don't have time to sit around and hope that the person buys it. If you don't buy it, someone else will. And so um, around the same time, there was a ton of stuff coming out and was in like Marshall's, Ross, Bell's, all these different retail outlet stores at the exact same time. And we never got confirmation, but you can follow the screenshots and the proof and the things that we looked at. And it really honestly looked like LuLaRoe hadn't paid my dyer couldn't accept the manufacturer had to resell to somebody else and it ended up in ross and what was happening is like they were getting like entire like one style like all the same color in every single in every single size so it wasn't like somebody offloading their inventory because you would have like 10 black sarahs no, it was like 10 it was like lots it, it like was lots. lots like yeah like 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 I need a yeah. to get a like quarter. a lot of the yeah. same style and the print. And, and it was like, where are these coming from? And Ross was selling it for less than what we bought it at wholesale. Wait, so who, who bought Lulu Row Consults were able to buy their stuff? Like really? They could have if they wanted to, they could have. And I think some people were, but yeah, they were selling it in about. these discount stores for less than we were purchasing at wholesale. That's insane. It was a nightmare. And then this this text thread ends with 
me texting him and saying, did you hear about the My Dyer lawsuit? And so it was literally our whole text conversation of all this evidence. And I was feeding all of this evidence over to my dyer. I was working with Paul Ivanovsky. He was the guy that was working on the my dyer case. And so anytime anything happened, I'd be like, Paul, did you know about this? And he's like, oh my God, get it to me. And I would, so, you know, that was all stuff that I had gotten and, um, and it all led up to the case being made. So it was really interesting to go back and read those. And I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot. And I, I was just like, this is incredible. Yeah, that's, <laughs> That's absolutely insane. Um, but so, so, so how are they able to spin that in their favor? How, like, it, it, do they just go by the don't pay any attention to what's happening behind the written strategy or? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, the, <laughs> the spin on that was that um, the reason LuLaRoe stopped paying my dire, they did admit to stop paying because there was proof, right? So the reason they stopped paying was because they said that my dire had really gone down it was that my dyer's fault that everything had gone down in quality. And so the reason that they weren't paying my dyer was because the quality was so poor and my dyer refused to fix it. And so LuLaRoe had no nothing to do other than to just stop payment and find a new supplier. But even finding a new supplier was against their contract. So even, even my source saying LuLaRoe came to me looking for me to do small runs was already LuLaRoe outside of their contract, looking to not have to work to my, with my dyer, looking for other contacts in China to manufacture. And if you look at these screenshots, he says like, you know, they came to me, but one, it was very obvious that they were scamming people. It was very well known in the industry that LuLaRoe was either bankrupt or pretty close to bankrupt and that they were scamming people and just really not to work with them. And, you know, How he turned them down. That? This was in like 2018. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. That's insane. But they were they were already sniffing around for other people to work with because my dyer wouldn't work with them anymore because they owed them so much money. So you're, you're <laughs> thinking by like 2022, we just get uh, paper towel leggings? Yeah, and here's the thing. That's the, the, the reason the fabric was so bad. Patrick would buy, and, you, and Mark says it in the documentary, right? They would buy it for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars a yard. So they buy these huge, huge bolts of remnants from either companies from like last year's or years prior styles that they're trying to get rid of in their inventory, in their warehouses, and they're just liquidating. So Mark would buy all that kind of stuff, like the cheapest of the cheapest of the last season of the whatever. And this fabric is called ITY. And it's um, it's like a bathing suit material, almost like. It's like that lycra stretchy and it's very Ooh, That slinky. material, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, it's very slinky. And that material was used in a lot of like our flowy skirts, like the Azure and things like in the Maxi that material they take that material and they put it on these machines and the machines rough it up and it's like they basically the top level of the fabric they rough up with these needles or whatever and it it breaks the fabric and it brushes it it's called brushing um and so they would brush the fabric and that's what makes it buttery smooth but this fabric was so cheap and so bad that even brushing on one side was not enough. They flipped the fabric over and they double brushed. So they would tell people, oh, it's double brushed, be extra soft. Everyone thought they were brushing the top twice. They actually would brush the top and then they would brush the bottom. That was their double brushing. And what happens is it makes the material very weak. So you have to use really thick material. And that's why the very beginning, the leggings that were thick were so good because that thick material could be double brushed, not a problem. But this thin ITY cannot, and it would create tiny little holes and rips. And then as soon as it was stretched and put on someone's body or stretched on the machine, a couple stretches, the next time someone put it on, psh, it would just rip like a nylon, like putting your finger through and it would just shred like that in a line. Oh it looked God. like people were cutting them with box cutters. People were like, there's no way this is happening. And, and I had customers going, I like have videos. They're like, look, if I bend over, it would literally go across their ass. Does, uh, does, does pointing out the flaws in the product do anything though? Because uh, like, obviously with the MLM structure, no one, even the people in the company, they're just like, I'm not making money on the products. I'm making money by recruiting. Right. You know, and I, I went into this business thinking that I was going to be selling clothes. You know, I didn't. I didn't really understand MLM at the time. And I thought, oh, cool. Like if there's people underneath me, I'll get a little percentage. Like, cool. That's like a little sales bonus, whatever. 
So for me, like I didn't understand. I thought I was just joining a company to buy clothes and sell clothes. And LuLaRoe, that's what they say, right? We're just your wholesaler. Right. Wholesale. They're acting like you're starting up like a franchise location or like right. you're starting a store or something. But then you and, can buy them cheaper at Goodwill and just resell them. Exactly. It's ridiculous, right? So it's just everything is just a total nightmare within this company. Um, looking back on it now, I think like, how did I miss all of it? Like, how did I not notice? But you know, when you go into it thinking it's your wholesaler, you start getting inventory. That's when I was like, well, why can't you just replace it? It's literally soaking wet. Like, I don't understand why you're telling me to dry them and resell them like at a discount or the stinky ones, put them in the freezer for breeze them, throw them in the dryer and then sell them at a discount. I don't understand why, if you were just my wholesaler, why you can't replace these things because these are defective and I purchased right. them. So I'm buying them for $10 and then I have to sell them at $10. And I did all this extra work in between for what it's a wash for me. I'm taking the hit on this. Right. What is going on? I don't want a pair of crappy leggings that I have to sell at cost. I want you to replace them so I can sell a normal pair that's not destroyed at regular price. You know, if you're truly my wholesaler, why is this such a problem and so difficult to get done? That, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. it's like they, they, yeah, they, they act like we're just a wholesaler. You're going to be a franchise. But that, that too, with like, I heard so many stories of people like if they're your wholesaler, why can't you also choose the exact quantities of each products that you want? Like, why can't you say my customers want primarily solid black leggings and leggings with these, this butterfly pattern, and then say, I'm right. going to put in an order for 50 of these and these sizes. And like, why you can't do that. And so they're like, no, we'll just send you what, like, whatever how did they do even that. justify just whatever sending you whatever <clears throat> ugly leggings they wanted? Okay, so here's that. So in the very beginning, the the rule was, oh my God, the rule was I think there was only supposed to be 5,000 of a print, okay? And that's not 5,000 leggings and 5,000 shirts. That's 2,500 shirts and 2,500 leggings. 5,000 in that print total across the board. That was, right. I think it started off 2,500. And then as we grew, they're like, we're going to, we're double now. So we're going to double it. Um, so you're thinking, okay, it's not just... 5,000 leggings. It's 5,000 across the board. So there's even less leggings. There's even less shirts. There's even less dresses than the 5,000. And so if you see this print, you got to buy it now because you might never see it again. You might never find it in your size because if you perchance happen to find your unicorn in your size, in your colorway, in oh your God. style, you might never find it again. So you better buy it when you see yeah. it right so they're already creating FOMO with the customers in that way like this is very rare like the false scarcity tactic yeah false scarcity right this is so rare this is so rare you better buy it when you see it or you might not get it and then you're gonna be really sad and if you ever see someone wearing it you'd be like oh I should have bought it that one time when I could when I could when I had the chance total FOMO it created FOMO for I have to have enough because I don't want my customers to feel FOMO and then my right. customers are like, I have to be there on time because I have to. What if she only gets three? I don't want Roberta to feel bad. I need to get there early. Like it just created a massive community of people like terrified of missing out on things. Um, so so we have that limited run. Right. But they never stuck to that. They just said it. They didn't actually do it. So we have all kinds of purchase orders from back in like 2018 of Patrick signing off on like 7,500 of a, a Carly in a specific print. So that already right there is like over what you said in one dress. Like if the, if the, there's leggings in that print or a shirt in that print or anything else in that print, you're now, you know, diluting the market even more of that print and making it so much easier to find now the FOMO that you've created doesn't exist anymore because you're, there's so many prints. And the problem is, so what they did, the FOMO then was only for the good prints. And there was only- They made like a bunch of bad of prints, prints. Like, oh, you'll be stuck and with the bad prints. A ton of bad prints, right? So many bad so, prints. Yeah. In the beginning, I would get a box and there, I know there's people listening. So maybe they, they can 
attest to this, but in the beginning, you would get a box and you'd open it up and 90% of it was sellable. You'd look at that box and you'd be like, oh my God, 90%, like I can sell almost all of this. And it was yeah. true. You could. It was so easy. You were getting all the prints that people wanted. You were getting multiples of that. So if somebody was like, oh my God, paper airplane sold. You're like, I've got five of them. Like people do, 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 do. And you're like, yeah, I just, I just sold $125 with leggings. Wow. Like that was so easy. It took nothing. Right. Toward the end, that that box switched. And so now you're only getting 10% good stuff and 90% donkeys. And you're just like, <laughs> hopefully I can sell these 10 yeah. right, to make enough money to buy another box and try again. Oh my God. That's maybe the worst. The next I, I can't box believe they did that. We'll have better stuff in it. And then we would swap with each other. Mm -hmm. we'd have parties. The consultants would have these big parties. And again, like in MLM and like the bite model talks about really like manipulating and controlling your time. Right. Mm -hmm. And the ways that MLMs will control your time where people are like, I only work my business part time. And I'm like, but you're on those webinars. You're yeah. in those group chats. You're in the Facebook pages. You're watching the YouTube videos. You're reading the books. They tell you to, they're taking your time away. And then we're going on to these things like these swaps where everybody comes because they don't have enough money to buy new inventory, but they need new inventory because it's, everything is stale and nobody wants to buy it. But your stale crap savvy, my customers haven't seen and my stale crap, your customers haven't seen. So we're going to meet up and we're going to bring our inventory and we're going to sit in my living room and we're going to swap piece for piece. I'm going to say, okay, go through my stuff and I'll go through yours and you'll choose five leggings from mine and I'll choose five leggings from yours and it's a wash. And now I have new inventory for my customers. Oh my God. They would even tell us to save boxes. Okay. Save boxes, open them from the bottom, go through it, put all the good stuff on top, reseal it, flip it over and open it live and be like, oh my God, look at all this amazing stuff that you placed on top right in the box so well, that you're unboxing like you manipulated the unboxing so you're, all, you're manipulating yeah. your own unboxing about all this good stuff and sometimes people would put old stuff in the box to make it look new to make people excited about look at what we thought and i was like that's not new you got that like a month ago you just repackaged it and pretended it was new and was like oh my god these were things they were training us like to they do. told like i never did your it. i thought it was scammy as fuck like, did Deanne specifically say that? Or was it like, never Deanne. Oh, she wouldn't say it, but you know, that she, she endorsed it in her mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If Deanne said anything, it was face to face. There was never any record of it being yeah. said. It was very hard to find her saying things. The fact that she doesn't remember the because of Lulero hashtag, that was ridiculous to me because like, I feel like she lied so much in that. Like when she I did. saw the documentary, she would be like, I love the editing of it, how they would have like her in court being like, what? They'd be like, "Are you the CEO?" And she'd be like, "What? I what's, what's a, CEO? a CEO? Like what business? I don't I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know." And then like it would cut to like her talking about like, "Oh, here's how my company works." <laughs> like it's like, "Oh, you're you're such a liar, dude." <laughs> she was yeah. just making shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Keeping in person, so there's no proof. Exactly. Here's my question. Who came up with the term unicorn hunting and were they aware of the sexual connotations of that? I don't think so. First of all, <laughs> I was like, someone had to know, right? <laughs> Cause I learned about unicorn hunting in that connotation probably like two or three years ago. And I bust up laughing. Yeah. I was like, That's not I hear what that we were the doing. They're like, we were going unicorn hunting. I'm like, Oh, you were Mormons yeah. are freakier than I thought. dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a unicorn in LuLaRoe is, is, any desirable print. So a pair of black leggings could technically be considered a unicorn. That's what's so ridiculous. That's so wild. So I had gotten a pair of blue for... leggings that someone got me in 2016 and they were just solid purple. And so I was I had no idea the company was known for like ridiculous ugly prints because back right. then it seemed like I was like, oh cool. Um and then later I found out that it was like impossible to get solid leggings and you had to get all the ugly prints. I was like, what the fuck is this company? This I will just terrible. say like I'm watching you wearing that shirt and you're, you're giving me serious PTA vibes and I'm here for it. Yeah, this is, yeah. So Amanda sent us both boxes of her old LuLaRoe clothes. 
Um, and I've been trying them all on and I cannot get over how inconsistent the sizing is. It is driving me nuts that this is an extra, this is an extra large. And I was wearing an extra small yesterday and it was bigger uh -huh. than this. And yeah. I was like, that makes sense. It depends on the style though. I put on like the one size leggings, which don't make sense to be one size because it's like, I'm, I'm a medium in everything. I'm a pretty medium sized person. And the one size leggings are pretty small on me. And I'm yeah. like, but it's because you got gains girl. It's because I got gains. Yeah. It's because it's my bulging thigh <laughs> muscles and <laughs> it's, quads. it's a, yeah, the, the one size leggings cannot handle my gains. Mm -hmm. that Either something... that or the sizing is just inconsistent and all. Yeah. And they would, they would blame it on us. They would say, well, are you sure that you're an OS? Are you sure you're a one size? And I'm like, I was like, well, I was yesterday, but if you change the size, I mean, yeah. are you trying to manipulate my sense of reality? So, what are you so, doing? So one of the reasons why the leggings always had inconsistent sizing in the legs and like the lengths and sometimes one leg was longer than the other or was like tapered a little tighter is they would stack all the fabric up like a huge stack of this ITY fabric, right? They throw the pattern on top of it and then they laser cut but when you have a stack of fabric this big it shifts yeah <laughs> and so when you're using like a giant laser cutter to cut through like hundreds of layers of fabric and the ones at the bottom are, on bottom are slightly shifting you don't have a consistent sizing it it's shifting so some of those leggings are going to have inconsistencies in the sizing um i remember people be like sold those leggings depending on where they're from and I'd be like, Korea. They're like, pass. <laughs> Korean leggings don't fit me. And I was like, okay. The Korean ones fit differently. Oh, I love the Korean ones. They're Korean. I want them. So like even the people that were in would get to the point like they knew the ridiculousness. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. But you, if you just know, you know, it's not a big deal. Once you know, you know. Um, and so people would be like, I don't like the Vietnam kind, or I don't like the China kind. And I was like, this is like this. I feel like this is a very slippery slope. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Um, and there's it, everything it was, is so different. I thought the whole point of a brand was that you want to trust the, the product right. and, know, and know, okay, this yeah. is a brand of clothes that I like. I can expect that they're going to fit like this and feel like this. And like, if everything is so different, depending on the item and the manufacturer and everything, like how is that not just like a terrible customer experience? I mean, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. And then you'd have to say things like you'd hold up a shirt and you'd be like, this is a small, but it doesn't have any stretch. So it's probably going to be more like an extra small. So, you know, and now I'm tasked with stretching it and figuring it out and being like, this runs a little smaller than normal. So this is a medium, but it's probably more like a small, you probably wouldn't, would not stretchy. You probably can't size up in this one. Like, it just was ridiculous. And again, it goes with that cult speak, right? Like we're speaking a completely different language. It's a dog whistle to anybody in LuLaRoe. If I talk about these things, they know because it's a LuLaRoe, like a LuLaRoe word or a LuLaRoe tactic. But at the end of the day, like everything was so unbelievably intentional, even the weird language, yeah. even compartmentalizing us and, and, and giving us our own language to speak. And even talking with sizing, like, oh, you'll understand when you're when you've come to a couple shows, you'll understand if it's an Irma, you can size down. If it's this, you should probably size up. This one's a little snug. So they intentionally I mean, wanted ridiculous. there to be this in-group language so that you'd feel emotionally invested. It feels that way. Yeah. Because what's the what other purpose is there? Yeah, because as a customer, I would just be confused and want to leave. But I guess the idea is that like once as a customer you understand what's going on, now it's like you feel like you are part of a community or something. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just, it was it just looks so wild too, because it's like, especially since a lot of it was done on like Facebook live parties and things online. And it's like, when I buy clothes online, it's already hard enough to know if it's going to fit. I like right. I look at the size charts and see the exact measurements. And even sometimes that doesn't come out right either. So it's like, if it's not a thing where I'm buying them in person, which I know some people have the parties in person, but if it's like, if I can't try it on in person and I know that the sizing is inconsistent. That just sounds awful. Like, why would I drop money on something that could be completely wrong in how it fits? Yeah. Joe, I don't know if it was laser cut. It might have been like a heat cut, but I've seen it happen. And it literally is like this, almost like a heat knife that's just like through it to cut it. It's very strange. 
<laughs> yeah, well, as Joe says, you couldn't stabilize the fabric. Maybe that's why it turned out so wonky, right? Because yeah. the fabric was just shifting all the time. Yeah, it shifts. Yeah, so I don't know if it was a laser or like a heat gun, oh but yeah, it, it, there's no way to stabilize fabric, stretchy fabric, that that many levels deep and get a straight line consistently. Maybe the first half top is good, yeah. but everything else is not going to be. Um, it's just always cutting corners. Um. Yeah, Paige the Puppet. Paige the Puppet wears baby clothes as she is a puppet. Um, all the puppets <laughs> and the plushies wear three-month size clothes. Um, so, okay, so you, um, I guess the where, where I first heard of you before we I got to know you through the online anti-MLM community was in the documentary that Vice put out a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, so I guess, how did you first, like, when you first left LuLaRoe, you... Like when you left LuLaRoe, you started getting involved in like this advocacy and like you did the Vice documentary. Now you've done this big thing. So you've been like very public with your advocacy against this company and the MLM structure in general. How did you first get involved with the Vice documentary? Like what was that process like from leaving the company to then getting to be so public and you're speaking out against it? Oh, wow. So Vice happened probably about a year after I left. Mm hmm. Um, they came to me in 2018 and what I had done, like, so I left in September, 2017, I spoke out within LuLaRoe, like indefective and within the niche of LuLaRoe, mm -hmm. um, started realizing that all MLMs were the same. And by, by January, 2018, my upline had come to me and said, Hey, are you planning on leaving? Because I was messing up everything. Cause I was inactive in the middle of her tree. Yeah. So she couldn't like get anything like she couldn't qualify for things. And she was like, are you planning on leaving or are you just staying or like what's going on? Like, cause if we, if you're leaving, if you could leave, cause it's messing everything up, you know? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, I'll totally leave. But I tried calling. I said on hold forever. I tried emailing. It bounces back. Even the, the website to, to close your business is inactive right now. So they make I've it hard to, to leave. leave. They make it very easy to yeah. sign up, but very hard to leave. Yes. I was like the three ways they say you can leave none of them work. So I'm just sitting here and I figured eventually it would hurt somebody enough that they would come to me. And that's exactly what happened. So it was like four or five months later. And she was like, are you planning on leaving? And I said, yeah, you know, and she's like, well, um, I, we want to offer you $500 to transfer your team to this other girl that was lateral to me because yeah. they didn't want to lose their pyramid. This girl wanted to like be a leader, whatever. Um, and I was like, if it gets me out of the company, sure, whatever, like fill it out, whatever it needs to do. We'll give you $500 as a, as an inconvenience fee for doing this. I had to sign a bunch of things, but I was able to be completely free and clear of LuLaRoe. And that's what I wanted the most. And so I paid a child support bill with it for my, my stepdaughter. Like we mm -hmm. paid with that money. There well, that's nothing, good. Right? At least you nothing. got, yeah. We paid yeah. a bill with it. Right. Yeah. And then I turned around and there were so many like, like reporters that I had already been helping that once I was like, I'm ready to speak. They were like, let's do this. So I spoke to Bloomberg first. They came out, they did a photo shoot. I think that was the first thing that I did. That was like, Oh, um, we did this photo shoot. And then I did um, kind of caught the attention of like anti MLM people on the internet. And I think I did the sounds like MLM, but okay. Podcast. They did Oh, I remember that row. podcast. I used and to I love that. That one. podcast doesn't make new episodes anymore, do no, they? No, 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 no. Yeah, no. I used to love that podcast back in the day, yeah. like a year so or two I was ago. On that. Yeah. Um, and then you know, other things started coming around, and I would speak out. Um, the Washington Attorney General reached out to me and said, "Hey, could you help us with the investigation?" I said, "Not a problem." Um, I was like I said, I was helping Paul uh, with the, my dire stuff, like all that kind of stuff was helping behind were ha happening behind the scenes when I filmed vice. Um, and they basically just reached out to me and said, look, we heard your story. Are you willing? Oh, and I was like, yeah, I'm willing. You know, like it, it I never thought of it as like, I'm going to, like, this is going to tear the company down. It was more like I'm a victim and there are victims and you're victim shaming us and victim blaming us. And I need people to know the truth. Right. That, sure. Maybe we made bad decisions, but you encourage them and you manipulated us into making them and people need to know the whole truth, not just 
the biased side. So I did the vice documentary thinking that it would help a couple people. Uh, you know, it went crazy, um, which led to so many more things, which was so exciting. But honestly, when Corey and Bly reached out to me last summer about Lula Rich, they said, we saw the vice documentary. We loved you. We've been following your advocacy and we want to make a movie, you know, and they asked me, they said, how would you pitch this movie to us? If, if we're coming to you saying we want to make a movie, how would you pitch it? And that's what I said to them. I said, okay, I've thought about this for a long time. I said to me, it's um, don't fuck with cats meets tiger king meets fire fraud. Yeah, like, exactly, okay, that's what exactly. I, so that was like the, the name of our stream yesterday was like, is Lula Rich the new like fire festival or yeah. Tiger King, which is, it reminded me of those. Yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Lachey so, is calling me. <laughs> oh my God, Lachey, tell Lachey I said hi, that she was great in the documentary. I will, tell I'll her pop to on come and be on like, our show if, you, if she wants. I will. Hey girl, I'm on a, I'm on a show. They wanted to say hi. Hi. You want me to come in and say hi? <laughs> Do you want to come in and say hi? Uh, I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if you want to come on our show at any point, you can come let on us on know. A different day too, if you want. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with right now. I want people to see for who I am. Okay. I'll send you the link. All right, cool. Guys, okay. a surprise. Okay. We get Lachey too. Okay. I've been wanting Bye. to talk to her for, she's awesome. She was so good in the documentary. Do, should I just send her the exact link? Yeah, just send her the same yeah. link. Yeah, it'll, yeah, Perfect. exactly. Yay. This was exciting. Too bad RK isn't here. He had to get off because he had a call from his uh, day job that he had to take. Um, this is um, a question we can ask both of you that Rivi has in the documentary has said that the owners refused a second interview. Why do we think that is? I'm wondering <laughs> why they took the first interview and then what changed between their perception uh, they had during the first interview to their perception during the second interview? Um, so Jenner and Julia, who were the directors, I think they're the directors, okay. um, they came to Mark and Deanne and they were like, you either, like we're making a movie about LuLaRoe. Like yeah. it's time and you can either be in it or you cannot be in it. So if you're in it, you can tell your story. And if you're not in it, someone else will tell your story. Right. So at least they get to share their you know, side that way. Narcissists. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to tell their story, if, especially as a narcissist, right? Yeah. They do seem um, pretty self-absorbed. I will say so that. much. Yeah. So much so. Um, and so for me, it's like they're narcissists. They're just, they're just narcissists. So on one hand, I was like, you got Mark and Deanne? And then on the other hand, I was like, of course you did. Like, they're not going to pass up opportunity to talk about themselves. <laughs> and I had no idea that they had filmed with Mark and Deanne. When they filmed with me, they filmed with Mark and Deanne first. Uh, they came down to San, uh, they came down to uh, Southern California. They went to Corona. They filmed Mark and Deanne. Then the next day, they filmed Lachey and Daryl in like mm -hmm. an office building. And then I think one day, and then the next day, they came down to San Diego and filmed with me. So it was like within the weekend and I had no idea they had talked to Mark and Deanne like at all. And yeah. they're asking me all kinds of questions when they're doing my interview. I mean, I was interviewed for 10 hours. So there's a lot of stuff that never made it in and is like on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just, there's so much stuff that I don't think there's so much stuff. And like, there's a lot of people that have reached out to me that have been with us through this whole thing. And they're like, I'm, I, I, I'm so proud of you and I'm so happy, but I'm really disappointed. And I said, why, you know, our story's out there. And they said, yeah, but like, I already knew all that stuff. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> but not everyone else knew that stuff. And that's who the movie's for is the people that didn't already know this stuff. Yeah. That was um, actually one of the things is cause I guess I've been doing anti MLM stuff for so long and I've <laughs> known how shitty of a company Lula Rowe is. Um, it, like when I watched this, I, it was fascinating, but I also wasn't surprised by anything. I was like, yeah, that sounds about how LuLaRoe would do. Yeah, that sounds about right from everything yeah. I've heard from every former rep. Meanwhile, I have people in my life that have been texting me like, oh my God, can you believe? Like, they're just like acting so shocked. And I'm like, 
I guess it is shocking. I am just desensitized. I guess it is shocking if you've never researched the company before to see all of this at once. In my yeah. mind, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, they did do that, didn't they? I, mean, I was like, this didn't surprise me at all. <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's really funny for me because like I watch it and it doesn't phase me. And like people will be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, yeah, no, like. Yeah, of course. But like it happened to me four years ago, five years ago. So it's like I've already processed through this and people are finding this now finding me. They don't know that I've been doing advocacy for four years. They don't know that I helped pretty much consult on this film. The reason Paul and Tiffany are in this film because I reached out to them. Lachey's in this film because I reached out to them. Daryl's in this film because I reached out to them. Oh, that's I awesome. want to say I reached out to Becca, too. I reached out to a lot of people. And so, like, I was helping they, um, from the very beginning. All the people you mentioned contributed, like, so much to it. I think yeah. Daryl's a lot Courtney of people's too. favorite. We love Daryl yeah. when he was, like, as RK and I were talking about him on yesterday's show, where we were, like, um, how his dream was to, how he would visualize himself, Miguel's. like, sitting at the bar, drinking the vodka cranberry and watching yeah. the repo uh people take he's, all the stuff out that's of like that's been his fantasy for the longest time oh, it's so he's funny, so funny. When he I brings love up him. Miguel's, it's so funny because he brings it up all the time and it's like to me it's like a huge insight joke to me so when it was in there i just remember watching it and i was like fucking daryl for real like <laughs> okay as kat brought this up and this is one thing because i'm oh hey kat for friday and i the whole the two kids got married to each other and mark and dn are just acting like whatever like they thought it was yeah. like oh that's kind of funny our kids married each other like what you yeah. didn't think that the world is gonna be shocked by that they're like right? oh, it's okay they weren't blood related and i'm like that doesn't make it okay yeah um so i will clarify a couple things but not to say that it isn't still creepy because it is yeah <laughs> um so uh Michael is an officially adopted child, like as a child was officially adopted by Deanne from Romania. So Michael has been in the family since he was, I don't know, probably like yeah. 10 or something. Anna, who they, who he married was never officially adopted by the, by the Bradham clan is what we'll call them. Oh, the Brady, okay. the Brady Stidham. So the she Brady was never a, the Brady, I don't know yeah, why don't call them that. There's 14 kids in that family. Right? Yeah. So Anna was never officially adopted. She was somebody that they went to Romania a lot. So when they were in Romania visiting the orphanages, like she was just somebody that was like, hi. And they just remembered her and they said she was always so sweet. And so when she wanted to go to college in the U.S., they sort of like invited her over and said, yeah, you okay. can stay with us. And so she was adopted in their family, like but never officially oh, okay. adopted. So she was going to college and I guess he was away at college. And when he would come back and visit, they sort of like had this spark. Okay. So they were related and raised, but not really, but still strange. So it's, it's like, and I still think the weirdest part was like the, ha 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 ha, ha yeah, it's funny. Like, yeah, just like how they just brush so, it off. Well, it's so traumatizing for some people, right? Like some yeah. people have familial trauma. Yeah. That maybe Mark and Deanne aren't thinking. And if you're making little jokes about incest or, oh, yeah, we, ha, 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 like, people actually deal with that in their real lives. So to, to, yeah. to turn it around and to make it kind of like this, like, he, 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 it's so cute and, and quirky where people, yeah. like, actually have this trauma. Like, I just felt it was very tone deaf. And we actually That's talked about thought. that on my podcast with uh, another retailer who was a small fish who watched the film as a friend of mine. And she goes, can I come on your podcast? I really need to tell the stories of the small fish and tell the stories of, of the things that weren't in Lula Rich. So I love that in my Lula Bitch podcast, I've got people that were in the film and then we have people in between that were not in the film, but that literally come in and like corroborate everything and add even more tea. And they're like, oh yeah, I remember that here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So really okay. So from, I'm to glad to you clarified the story. It seems a little yeah. less like, like full it's still creepy best, but it's still it's creepy still creepy but it's instead of being a 10 it's like an 8.5 right it was more so that like i'm not gonna tell these two people that seem to me i guess they they did they do still kind of have the same parents which is making yeah. it weird yeah um right but yeah yeah, no, I, I get you. It's I more feel so you're right. Yeah, right like how like flippant they were about it. They're like, yeah, yeah, two of our kids married each other. That's kind of funny. <laughs> and it's like, 
no and they're like if they were blood related it's okay and i'm like yeah i'm i'm adopted i'm not blood related to at least half of my family so i don't like when people get like oh you're not you're not blood related so it's not incest like i hate that so much because i'm like i have so many relatives that i'm not blood related to and if people say that like i'm like incest Yes, it, yeah, like a hundred percent, it would. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, please, please get that away from me. Yeah, um, yeah. My mom's here, and she Hi. says I was so disturbed by them trying to get women to get gastric sleeves and trying to rope husbands in. Yes, yeah, the gastric sleeve thing, especially then that one woman would talk about how she got the surgery in the U.S. instead, and then she. Uh, almost died from the result, mm-hmm. like the after effects. And they, yeah. Deanne was like, well, you should have got it in Mexico. I told you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was Deanne, yeah. I don't know if you you know or can talk about it, but was Deanne getting like referral money from yes. that doctor? Oh, she was? Yeah. Oh my God. Because I'm like, she seemed very intent on, you have to get it done in Tijuana yeah. with this particular doctor. And it's like, why? And it's I'm like, we were like, she yeah. has to be getting referral money. Yeah. Oh my so God. basically the way that it happens, I don't know if it was DM, maybe DM, but there was a kickback. Hey, it's Lachey. Lachey, so hello. We're talking about hello, the TJ surgery like, good right morning. now. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So everyone in the chat was so excited when they heard you were coming on because a lot of people were talking about how you were one of their favorite people in the documentary, which I get. I loved, I loved your contributions to it. So I'm so excited that it's like, surprise, everyone who stayed on the show this long. So you guys get to Ooh. hear from Lachey as well. Thank you so I'll much say, for coming I got all on. the hookups. <laughs> Good Roberta morning. Um, she knows everyone. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Roberta. I love you to the moon and back, sister. The best. You're the best, Jay. So I came this out morning. this morning. Your episode came out this morning, girlfriend. Oh, yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> y'all, if you weren't here at the beginning, don't forget to check out the Life After MLM podcast, which is run by Roberta. And the most recent episode that came out has Lachey as the guest. So you'll definitely want to check that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about the weight loss surgery. So basically what happened is if you wanted to get the weight loss surgery and the shake can add some extra tea on here, but I'll give the gist. Yeah. Um, you would send, you would, you would reach out to Lene, who is Deanne's sister and Lene right. runs the office in Tijuana for a, a weight loss center called obesity, not for me. Um, and so sounds like a very legit professional medical clinic name. I'm sure okay. it's a nice place, you know, but like, uh, like, uh, yeah. uh, you get what you pay having for someone having someone bring so many people down. I would be like, Ooh, you know what I mean? So, um, if you wanted the surgery, you would basically message Lene to get on the list. You would PayPal her PayPal $5,000. She would get you on the list. You'd fly down on the jet. Lachey can, we, she can talk about the jet. She was on the, the photo of them all <laughs> on the jet. They're going to TJ to get weight loss surgery. And Lachey is the one taking the photo. So she can tell that story. But they take a $1,000 cut. They send 4000 to the doctor. And then you go down and you get your surgery. And they keep $1,000 for them. I was like, I yep. knew that they had to be, because there's no reason that they would be like, you have to get it at this particular clinic. You can't get it in your own country. I was like, because Deanne and Mark, they have to be getting a cut. So they were getting, they were getting a cut the whole time. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they were getting a cut. I'm sure they were getting a cut for sure was yeah. getting a cut because it was only available to you if she thought you could bring something to the table because $5,000 is not nothing. Right. Not for a surgery. So, I mean, yeah, that at, at that price. Um, and I knew people who actually had the surgery, and I was really shocked that they got the surgery. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, they wouldn't say anything. You would just see people in home office, and then you wouldn't see them anymore. And then it'd be a while, and then you see them, and you, they come back, and it's like, oh, okay. Huh. What'd you do? And then, you know, the secret is out. Oh, I went and got the surgery. So-and-so told me, so... I got the surgery. I feel so much better. And I'm thinking to myself, and I noticed the people that were getting the surgery, they were people moving up in the company, like as their job came. 
they were moving up. And I just oh. thought, well, how interesting, because here we have Deanne, she's exuding all this empowerment and everything and how you have to be this woman and be strong and take charge. But you're sending people to Mexico to get surgery because you don't like the way they look because of how they look in the photo. So you were never going to take a picture with Deanne if you weren't on point, period. That's just how it was. Doesn't matter what she has to say about it. If you weren't on top of your game and you didn't bring nothing to the table, you didn't get to sit with the inner crowd, the inner circle. And as for me, I worked there. So it wasn't as I was sitting in the winner circle or the crowd. It's just, it was part of my job. Like today I would get this, I would get, uh, an email saying what I had to do today. Sometimes I had to speak. Sometimes I had to go places. Sometimes I had to meet her friends. Um, all kind of stuff. It was crazy shit going on in there. You, if you guys only knew the magnitude of stuff that was going on in there, it was crazy. Well, I know that you mentioned, and this was the one. This was the, this is what stuck out to me about what you were saying, Lachey, was that you mentioned on your first day there, you were wearing an outfit from Chanel, and Deanne made you change into. Oh it. yes, it's so, Chanel. And and so I here like, I go. Like I got this she's... new job, and I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm cute. I'm always gonna be cute, no matter what. I don't care what day it is. So you know, I'm going to go to this new job because I hear all this stuff, mind you. LuLaRoe, when I started at LuLaRoe, I came from another company. LuLaRoe bought my contract out to have me work for them. So that's how I got started. So I go to work. I'm really cute. I'm, you know, ready to go. And I go in the hallway. I go to the bathroom or either to the kitchen. And I see this lady, this tall lady. She's got this bright red lipstick on, this big hair, and all these goddamn colors on i didn't think nothing else i never met her and she has like some henchmen behind her of course she's and got we, henchmen. Walked, <laughs> we literally yeah she had like two or three people but everybody when you was with deanne in office you always walk behind her always of course no matter what i I, I never yeah always walk behind her she, she's so, like the queen. yeah i give it to her yeah she's because she built a, a lularoe empire Yes. So we actually walk by each other, like we walk by the in the hallway, and not even five seconds after she passes me, she stops, she puts her glasses down like this, and she looks at me, and she says, that's not LuLaRoe. I said, no, it's Chanel. <laughs> and they everybody was looking at me. By the time everybody was looking at me, I knew then, I was like, oh, shit, well, I'm in trouble on my first day, because whoever this is, every, everything has a glass window so you could see everything from your seat like it would be a wall but it's glass so everyone is looking like what is going on and then you see Deanne turn around and go towards the warehouse and then you see me turn around behind her and go to the warehouse and she tells me to pick out a bunch of stuff and that I need to wear Lulu from now on when I'm at, in the office at work and she probably That's gave me a, a few hundred dollars worth of stuff I had to buy it from that point on, though, too. And just so everyone knows, uh, we were required to wear three pieces of LuLaRoe in home office, or you got in trouble. Um, and we did buy it, but we got it at a discount. Well, you had to wear three pieces. Okay, so I currently, this week, as we're doing LuLaRoe week on this show, <laughs> I am wearing LuLaRoe clothes every day. One of my friends sent me her old clothes that she had. Uh, and so I've been wearing ugly-ass LuLaRoe clothes every day on this show. How could you possibly <laughs> wear three pieces of it? I'm wearing one piece of you it. Have, okay, so much. for me, like, yeah, for you me, need a vest. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call it, Roberta? A vest? Yeah, so you got to throw the joy vest over the top of it. That's another piece. Okay, so yeah. for me, I would just, I have my own style. I would like, I would put a knot somewhere. I would like make a design in my stuff. And I was always getting called in. So before I got like a high position at uh, LuLaRoe, Megan Alvarez was my boss. And uh, she currently still works there. But I remember when I got there, um, how they would pick on her. They would pick on her all the time. Aww. And she would tell me, mm -hmm. yeah, she would tell me, no, no awe, no awe. Because the oh, way they she... picked on her, I don't know how the hell she's still there now anyway. Because I had to go and cuss everybody out and tell them to leave her alone. Because we couldn't get our jobs done half the time because she was in a goddamn mess. Because she was stressed out. 
because of all the shit was going on. So no, not mm-hmm. all. Because if she had any inkling and any type of sense, she'd have left they ass. She'd have left they ass before I left them. Yeah, I so wonder why out. she's still there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And so the people that I'm friends with that still work there, I'm like, she's really there. And they're like, yeah. And the fr- people that tell me that, I they tell me, they're like, Shay, I need a paycheck. If you can get me a job somewhere else to take care of my household, I'll leave. So I get it because I was there. Not so much per se, I needed the paycheck. It was I wanted the paycheck because it was good. And I was yeah. making good money long before I became a consultant. My bonuses are long work would carry me. Okay. So the money was good in the corporate side. Yeah, the money was good. I even um I mean, we even had to push for that because when we first started, we would like go to lunch together and we would all sit. Like I cannot wait to have my own everything because I just want to call all my people that was on the onboarding team and be like, do you guys remember when we would have this conversation about us getting paid? Because they didn't want to pay us at first. And then I started to do the math and I went to Mark and Dan. I was like, look, check this out. You guys only want to pay us this, but our team alone, the onboarding team is bringing you in this much. I think we should get a pay raise, pay cut, something, something. And we did. They heard us and they did. The onboarding department was like mad. Like it was crazy in there. The amount of people that like was trying to get us to onboard a day. And like the the people would like be on these lists and you would count. You'd be like, they're onboarding a hundred people a day. I'm 400 down on the list. I'm going to be getting my call within the next four days. Yeah. Someone asked earlier in the chat, was the reason that they made those wait lists was that to create like a, a false scarcity also was that to create like the the idea that you want to be waiting for this was there really no only certain... no it wasn't no oh, okay. that the the cue so the cue was because they didn't know the magnitude that LuLaRoe was gonna hit okay LuLaRoe, so the cue was hit, real that hit. wasn't fake. so the okay. cue was real I will give them that the cue yeah, they had to create the queue to satisfy people because here you did, you you went and you launched this business and then you went and you had all these people believe in you. So now they're coming to you. The only problem is you don't have nowhere to put them. What are you going to do with them? You don't have that many people in home office to talk to them, to onboard them. So they came up with the queue. Yeah. And the queue was where you would make sure if you got into the queue, before you even got into the queue, you had to go. A, there was a few steps before that but once you got into the queue that was your that was your solidify uh solidify you like um i'm going to get my call soon i have my money ready it also gave people time to if they didn't have their startup call they had time to get it because they were going to get a call around this time and you always knew you were going to sit in the queue at least 90 days if not more so you had 90 days to get your startup cost so that when we gave you that call you were ready to go because not everybody had their startup costs when I called them. Well, the startup I, uh, costs were so expensive in LuLaRoe too. They were the most expensive I've seen. Like, uh, you know, a lot of MLMs have an expensive startup cost, but LuLaRoe is one of the worst that I had seen because a lot of them are like, oh, you know, here's the $99 startup kit, which is also bad in its own right because that way it's roping in people who don't have that much money at that moment. Um, but Lula yeah, and, was, yep. is uh, a lot. There was a, a high startup fee on that. Um, and $5,000 was for the lowest package. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is, that's just insane. Cause I knew people who were doing LuLaRoe stuff and I'm like, didn't we just like graduate from the same college and get similar jobs? Like, where did you get $5,000? Like, that's <laughs> right. kind of what I was like. Right. And now it costs right. four ninety nine. Yeah, we saw that the other day when we were looking at the website. So the, our first yeah. day for the week on the stream, we just kind of researched LuLaRoe, looked at the website and stuff, and we're like, "Yeah, it's it's it looks like they cut it in a, a tenth of the size to to join the yeah. company now." Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the threshold for the FTC, right? The threshold for the FTC for a red flag of a bogus business opportunity is five hundred dollars. So if you make uh, it four ninety nine. Right. You fly right they, under the radar. they can't flag you and they can't like be in your business. <laughs> they made sure they did everything to the cusp right to where they wouldn't have nobody digging in their business. I didn't find that out till I started being nosy. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I started to be nosy after a while. I started snooping and I was like, oh, okay. 
And I started going into certain stuff and I was like, okay, this is what, okay, this is what's going on. And I still did my job every day. And I just said, okay, this is what's going on. So I'm going to have to come to terms with it. And I did after a while. And that's how that happened. Tell them about your flash drive. Ooh, oh. I want to hear about the flash drive. Um, after a while, I would get uh, emails and phone calls and stuff and everything. And I would, like I said, I started snooping and doing my own homework. And because I held a, a high position, I was able to get in certain things. And uh, one day I just took it upon myself because I just said, you know what, if this is what it is, I'm going to find out. And so I had a flash drive and I started doing my own homework. So as I was looking around, I made sure that I recorded whatever I needed because I was starting to see stuff that wasn't right, um, applications and just all kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Wait, what? what is this doing here? And this person shouldn't be here. And how did this person get here? So everything I started to look up when I investigated, I have on my flash drive. And I did that for a couple of months before I even decided to bounce out and become a consultant. And I've kept it and I've had it ever since. So for me, it's just like, why would you guys lie and say all of these things when you know it's not true? Like, really? Really, come on, Deanne. You, you, like, how do you not know the address of your multi-billion dollar company? Right. Okay. Recall. Some of that stuff. The deposition she's sitting is in. like the worst, the worst thing ever. You guys are like, and you know what's the sad thing about it is Mark and Deanne. They have so much money to where they could have fixed this. They didn't have to turn out like this. Every company when they start out, you're gonna hit bumps and roads. You know, I get yeah. it. You know, you're starting out a business, you want to keep the money and stuff like that. But you got to remember and keep one thing in mind. All that money you got, all the people that you screwed over, those are the people that put you right there. So the least you could have done was like, you know what? Hey, I understand. Um, I can't give you back all your money, but here's what I can do. Or let me see what I can do. And I never got that from them. And I would I would voice that. And I never got that from them. Not once. They never once said, here's what I can do. Or anything like that. And that was just like a point for me. Like, well, if you would treat them like that, the people that gave you all this money or put you up that high, how the hell would you do us in the end and we work in home office? Oh, my God. So that, that's what it was for me. Yeah. Hey, we were talking earlier about how it was so wild just listening to her in court act like she didn't know anything. Being like, what's the so address weird. of your building? Uh, I don't know. Are you the CEO of the company? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What CEO? Know. What company? Like what? Like Who's Jordan? She, she's just acting like she doesn't know anything. Like just making like. And yeah, it made it me ridiculous. sick because I was like, when you're in a home office, the way you be acting with your head tilted and your mouth running and that red lipstick all over your teeth and stuff. I got none of that from her. I got so like she, none of that. She was very clear. Yeah, like, so none like, of that from her. Yeah. yeah. I got none of that from her. Okay. So I don't know. Like, was I was in court was definitely an act. Well, here's the other thing. Yeah, that was they chased her for that deposition. She got out of that deposition for months. Oh, she would really? cancel. Oh, I can't come in. I have a doctor's appointment. Oh, I don't feel good. And she, they chased her. Oh my God. It was insane. I would get phone calls from the Washington attorney general's investigator and they, they would ask me, they're like, do you know where Deanne is right now? And I was like, no. And they're like, we're trying to find her to, to like, to serve her and we can't find her. I said, I have no idea. Do you know where she's going to be? Is she live right now? Is there any way that you can find her? And I was like, I think she's at the office. And it was literally working behind the scenes with like the attorney generals to find these people. Oh my God. Because they're trying to depose that, like to, to serve them to be deposed. And like, they can't even find these people because they know it's coming and they're like dodging it. Correct. In fact, and it got to a her, point. It got to a point where you couldn't even find Deanne for a while. Like people yeah. would say she would have hadn't. They hadn't seen her at work, and I'm just like, wow. Because when I worked there, she was there every day. Yeah. Every day, you knew when they was there because they when they pulled up in their entourage. Yeah. Oh, oh and all of their Mercedes. There's a Mercedes. The BMW. Yes. Mercedes. Mercedes. 
And they all have matching Mercedes. I had the BMW. They had the Mercedes. Oh, right. And Lachey has a BMW that looks similar, but isn't the same, obviously. And they would give her shit about it. Like, why are you parked here? You're not part of the family. <laughs> like, Yes, they you would. You can't park like, in the line of our special cars. You're not I would a park, family. Uh, first of all, I would, I would have, be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning. So it was still kind of dark. It's cold. And um, when we first, when I first started at LuLaRoe, we didn't have a security there at home often. We didn't have security at all. So I would get to work and I, I would pull up in the front and I would park right there because it's closest to the front door. Why the hell would I park anywhere else when there's plenty of parking? Because when I get there, mind you, no one's there. There might be maybe a handful, maybe five people. And, th and that's barely that because I'm the one that opened the office in the morning. <laughs> It's just so ridiculous. Everything about it, like, just even, like, how the whole family was, like, were, like everyone in the upper positions was, like, the family and, like, Mark and Deanne and their kids. Like, everything just had the biggest cult vibe of, like, everything in there. Nepotistic cronyism. Yes. And she wanted and she wanted everybody to always just, like, always, always be in Lula Road, no matter what. You yeah, had to like be in Lula Road. And if you Lula got caught head to toe. Yeah. If you got caught at work and you didn't have Lula Row, it was a problem. They called you in the office. Or either they called you in this room they made for us and it was called the Zen Room. Oh my God. The Zen Room is like the Scientology box. The Zen Room. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's we have so the crazy. Zen Room. I remember when they first gave us the Zen Room, it was crazy because the Zen Room was for us so we could take a moment, have a moment um and like relax on our on our break and stuff oh my and god it, it yeah. didn't be and then the zen room turned into the the trouble room so when you got in trouble they took you in that room so whenever you were in that room you knew it went from the zen room to the trouble room right whenever so it's like it's the room. opposite of zen like and you don't need a break now you're in there to like have more stress because your boss is right you, right yeah. and it would be so funny because i would be like i would get an email and they'd be like okay we have to talk to so and so in the room and i'd be like i'm busy right now i don't have time to be going in the room look say whatever you're gonna say to them and let them go it was always a big thing you know it was like ooh, that person they're going in the zen room what did they do and that was so annoying because i hated it i hated it so much but it was my job so I would be sitting in there and they'd be in there talking I'd be playing with my nails and all kind of shit because I was like this is pointless we should be on the phone we should be doing something we're in here because y'all don't like this person because this person has a certain shirt on right. shit, the shirt y'all telling her to wear anyway is ugly what's the point she's here to do a job oh, this dress I'm wearing right now that someone sent me is ugly as hell like and okay, I was also talking about okay, this is an extra large. And yesterday I was wearing an extra small, and the extra small was bigger than the extra large. And I'm like, this is insane. I have like every size of clothes that someone sent me, and none of them are are consistent. It's just wild. The clothes are so bad. Oh, I know. I have a couple of pieces there, but these ones are actually my favorite because they meant something to me at that point in time. Yeah, I'm actually sense. gonna I'm gonna auction them off though. I'm actually. Oh, that's a good somebody, idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never going to wear it outside. I might go and do an interview and have the dress on, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah. The clothes just, they just, they don't bring joy. Like I, I see them in the closet. Like Marie Kondo. When we followed Marie Kondo yeah. for a week on this show and we say, does this spark joy? It's like Lula yeah. Row does not spark joy. It didn't, it, you know, in the very yeah. beginning when I first left, I purged the majority of my stuff. I was like, I'm never going to wear these whatever leggings like these are stupid and I, I got rid of a lot of it I kept a lot of my Carly's and I cut the sleeves off and made like tank top dresses and they were just yes. like house dresses in the heat because it was just hot yeah. but I didn't really wear LuLaRoe out because I felt so ashamed and I yeah. and here's the other thing is I get bullied a lot for speaking out so oh I don't want to give what anybody through, some dude. sort of like Oh, she doesn't like it, but she still wears that. Yeah, what you, you know what, what I you mean? through on TikTok is some bullshit. Because you guys, <laughs> if you remember, uh, Roberta was on my main channel a few weeks ago when we were talking about how a lot of MLM companies have been trying to suppress anti-MLM creators. Uh, quick update, Eric Worre is not suing Antibot, so her videos Yay! have now gone back up because she counter-striked counter him or whatever, and then it was like, uh, he had like 14 days to to sue her. Otherwise, her videos could go back up. Uh, so he didn't sue her. 
Of course uh, he didn't. I, of dude, course I was not. ready for my first YouTuber boxing match to be against Eric Worre, but maybe now it can be against Hell all yeah. the people that been are there out there it. trying to trying to take down Roberta's TikTok. <laughs> Good all the for time. her. No, it's so weird. So, like, obviously, like, my TikTok went down the day the movie came out, like Thursday <laughs> afternoon. Oh my god! Like at like two thirty. So mad. That and then it came out. Like it like came out like two and a half hours later. I was like, "Are you for real?" And then I made this video and I was very angry and I was like, this is insane. I've been, you know, targeted yeah. and I get taken down two hours, however many hours. I don't remember what I said, but like a couple hours before my movie premieres, I said that, right? Like I said, my movie in this instance where I'm talking to TikTok yeah. about being angry that they censored me right before my movie came out and someone, I don't know who, but it, I mean, these are the other comments I deal with. Someone put on Twitter oh, well, or on uh, on Reddit. They're real brave over on Reddit, but I'm there too. And I will call your bullshit out over there as well. Oh yeah, I'm on Reddit um, too. I'm getting fights in. on Reddit. I got your back. I'm like, if, if the haters don't think that I don't have tons of people sending me screenshots when anybody talks shit about me, like they are delusional. Exactly. Right. That's what so, I don't get. Yeah. When they, we have all these haters. You guys... You guys say we're 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 bullies and we're a racist. You don't realize I I to be honest with you, I know there's been some bad stuff said about me because I can only imagine. I haven't even looked it up because I don't need to, because you know why? My social media stupid. alone Shit. is gonna handle it. I didn't even have to say anything. People are screenshot and be like, um, I'm gonna take care of this for you. I just wanted you to know I'm getting ready to go cuss this person out because they mm -hmm. had no right to say that. So I don't have to say anything. So when they jump on me and Roberta or they try to try to censor us or try all you guys are doing is making yes, our platform right. bigger and making it where, hey, maybe Roberta and Lachey have a point or maybe they're telling the truth. Because you guys are working so hard to stop us and, and shut us down. And it's like, okay. We'll shut down for a day at, or two. At what point? You can't right? change that. If what I'm saying is a lie, why are you trying to shut me down? If what exactly. I'm saying that's is the true, thing too, is like on my channel, me? I'm always talking about things I disagree with and bringing things up, but I would never say it shouldn't exist or that it should come down because I'm like, no, we can look at this and talk about why it's incorrect and use this as an educational tool instead. So right. if you, yeah, if you, um, are so intent on that information not being out there, it's like, well, maybe there must be some truth to it or something. Yeah, well, this girl on Reddit was like, oh, uh, because someone was talking shit about me. They were like, I'm so sick of Roberta pretending like she's some sort of hero. And I was like, one, I've never called myself a hero. No. In fact, when people call me a hero, I say, I'm not a hero. So that's she's a hater. That's like ridiculous. She's right? a hater. Anybody that follows me you. actually would know that. Yeah. And then this yes. other girl responded and she was like, yeah, I saw her and she made a video and she called this movie her movie. And I was like, it is because it, it you're the reason why all, you're the reason why all this is going on. And also, like I feel like you me? can call it your movie. Lachey can call it her movie. This is a movie that you guys created. Like you yeah. guys, everyone who is in it made it what it is. Call but it your movie. So Own that shit. That's great. What's so funny is like I've been I've been working with these people, this team I yeah. have for four years. Lachey, Daryl. Paul, Tiffany, Courtney, Becca, all the people in Defective. There's a huge team. I've been working with these people for years. Ryan McKnight, he's one of them too. And so it's funny to me. And I've known Roberta, like, I've known Roberta for a long time. You know, she said, Yeah, I've known Roberta for a long me. time. I onboarded I've her and I've been friends day one. for ever since. Oh, you onboarded so her. People, That's yeah. yeah, so people are people are like, oh, Roberta found Lachey to join her call. And I just want to make it clear, I Roberta did not find me to help her fight her cause. I've been friends with Roberta for years. Years, long before she thought about doing this. I was friends with her when she was at the top of her game in LuLaRoe. I was friends with her before she became a part of LuLaRoe. I onboarded her and I've been friends with her ever since. Yeah. That is a true story. I did yeah. not just become friends with her. I did not just start hanging out with her. Uh, she did not recruit me to get on this bandwagon. I have known Roberta Blevins for years. I onboarded her. We have been friends and we will be friends till the end. Yeah. 100%. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I, I it's ridiculous. How supportive everyone you know, is. Because I saw stuff people too. said. I, I would look I and I'm like, oh, it said, oh, Roberta uh, recruited Lachey to join her, her call. So I'm ridiculous. like, huh? 
Someone you said recruited I, me. I created to join your call. Cult. I think that's my. Do favorite you guys so not far. realize I worked in home office and was a consultant? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, someone told me that I uh, I had created a hate filled cult. Oh my god! Yeah, I was like, dang. Thank you, actually. Thank you so much. That's so kind. Those words are beautiful. Um, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous the way that people are. Um, but this girl was like, she called it her movie. And I was just like, excuse me? I said, have you heard any of the other interviews I've done or the videos I've done where I call it our movie? Or I say we or I use the term my yeah, team? Yeah, exactly. As Sarah right because here says. Nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten, I say we because it's a collective effort. But when I was right. talking right. directly to TikTok about my movie, I was very angry. Yeah, and, and, but you have like, like, and it's but been happening politically for correct as well. That's how you address it. You're politically months. correct. So it's like these people don't yeah, follow me. Sarah they don't know what's here, going like, on. If famous actors and actresses all the time are like, this is my new movie coming out, they're not the only person in it. They're not the they only sure person are. in it. But they still can call it their movie, just like you can. I, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. People <laughs> are so just ridiculous. looking for reasons to be mad. Yeah. There was you guys all that... need to check out um, this episode that just came out on Roberta's podcast, Life After MLM. You guys need to listen to this podcast because the episode with Lachey just came out hey! four hours yeah. ago. You guys yeah. all need to check this out. Episode 49 is called Lula Bitch. I love it so much. I know. So, guys, <laughs> right, after right? this stream is over, I'm going to have to wrap up in, in just a second because I've got some meetings to get to today. But after the stream is over, please, if you want more information about Lula Rowe and the Lula Rich documentary from the two people that I have on here right now, <laughs> please go ahead and listen to the this new episode of the Life After MLM podcast. I, I am excited to listen to it myself. I think it's going to be wonderful. Um, Lachey, do you have anything that you want to plug? Do you have any uh, ch uh, channel or TikTok or anything that you can uh, check out? You have me um, Instagram at he Mrs. Does. LBC. Um, TikTok, uh, Facebook is Lachey Kimbro. Um, I'm always on here. Reach out to me. I'm normal. A lot of people are like, oh my God, I'm fangirling. I'm just like you guys. I'm a normal person. So I normal. Was just, I'm so normal. If you guys only knew, uh, I was just somebody that was able to work in home office. Um, got to see what was going on, experienced it myself from both ends and, I'm here to tell my story just as that. And if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. Either way, I'm still going to say what I have to say, though. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys can all follow Lachey right here on her Instagram. And this I'm trying to get account. Lachey to start a podcast because she's got so many people that are willing to spill tea to her. And yeah, I so I will be coming oh, out yes. with a podcast. Uh, I will uh, <laughs> give you guys more information. You can find it on all my social media at the end of the week. Um, and you can also, any information you need or contact, you can also reach me through Roberta as well. Yeah, I can get you in touch with Roberta. Wonderful. Yeah, as soon as when your new podcast comes out, definitely let us know. We'll all want to check that out. That sounds fantastic. Both of you, thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show today. I'm so happy that we got to hear directly from you guys. Thank you so this. much for having me. And of course, <laughs> any, come back. Both of you, come back anytime. I appreciate it. We love having it. you guys on the show. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time for more discussions of LuLaRoe and what a shit company it is. We're going to try to have some more anti-MLM YouTubers and creators on tomorrow. We're hoping, I think we're going to have Kat. I think we're going to have Savannah Marie. Oh, and Arian gave a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. You guys are all fantastic. I will see you all again tomorrow. Keep on supporting. Thank you guys. Businesses. You guys have an awesome day. I love you guys. Keep it up. You're the